I really caffeinated. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Hopefully the lighting in this one is a little bit better. I don't know, the whole front half of my house is window. It makes it like a little bit, I don't know what I'm doing. My hair is a disaster. It's because it's a reflection of my life. I don't know how to film. I don't know any of this. Um, so that's fine. I'm not a beauty guru. We're not here to talk about my hair. Today, we are here to talk about birds again. The reason I'm making this video is actually because a customer at my job came in the other week and went, oh my God, you're the girl who takes her bird on the bus. And I had to go, yup, that is me. So today we're gonna talk about how to travel uh, with a pet, specifically how I travel with Cusco. Before I get into anything, I just wanna start by saying, that this is how I travel. I'm not here to say that my way is the only way or even the best way. There's lots of different husbandry techniques and it doesn't necessarily mean that some are better than others or that one is right and one is wrong. So this is how I travel with Cusco. If you're new here, Cusco is my lovebird. You're probably new here. This is a really new channel. Cusco is my lovebird. We'll meet him later. So the first time I ever traveled with Cusco was actually by plane. I was going out of province. I live in Canada. So I was going out of province for a work contract and I didn't have anybody to look after Cusco. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm bringing him with me. It was about a seven hour flight. So I did a lot, a lot, a lot of research. I was very nervous, especially with all the media you hear about animals on planes. It turns out Cusco's small enough that he can go in the cabin. So it ended up being a really positive experience for both of us. And since then I've taken him on a number of other flights and uh, he's done really well. I fly with WestJet every single time. Uh, they have been absolutely phenomenal with, with Cusco. So you need to check the restrictions with your airline that you're choosing to fly with. And last time the pilot actually came out to meet Cusco because he'd never had a bird on his plane before. So that was really cool. Halfway through the flight, they brought him some pretzels. It's nice. So you'll need to check with your airline. For WestJet, they require a soft-sided carrier. So let's talk carriers first. This is my go-to carrier for everything. This is a Sherpa. They're my favorite brand for a lot of reasons. Number one, they meet the in-cabin requirements for most airlines. So they're a pretty surefire way to get your animal on a flight. They are soft-sided. They have a number of reinforcements in the top here and on the front and on the back and on the sides to help make sure that the carrier doesn't get squished when you put it under the seat as required for takeoff. The other thing I really like about Sherpas is that the deluxe model comes with two different strap options. So you have the little kind of like duffel bag one here, or you can do an older over the shoulder one, which is just like a lot more convenient when you're carrying a crap ton of stuff like me. The other thing I really like about Sherpas is of course the inside, super important. They have a removable fleece liner that is machine washable that also Velcros to the inside as well as a baseboard underneath to stop anything from pushing up on that liner and give your animal a nice solid grounding that is also fleecy and comfortable. Ta-da! Wow, so nice. My camera keeps sliding. Okay, so apologies that my camera keeps tilting. It's literally duct taped to a lamp right now because I couldn't find my tripod. I tried, I tried, I do my best. Literally, like there's a piece of tape over my face right now. I can't even see what I'm filming. Now that we have our carrier, we need to make it a little more bird friendly because birds really shouldn't be standing on flat surfaces like this, especially for hours and hours on end. So what I did for Cusco, and I'm using, this is actually my old Sherpa liner. What I ended up doing is screwing or cutting a hole in the liner and in the foam underneath and then I screwed this perch in at both ends. So what this does is it just makes it more comfortable for Cusco, especially on a longer flight where you inevitably hit some kind of delay. The next thing you need to make sure is obviously food and some kind of water, something to help keep them hydrated because we dehydrate really quickly on planes and so do our pets. <laughs> I just got this little like two in one dish um, from one of the Hagen Vision cages. And I like it because it's nice and flat on the bottom and flat on one side. If this is, we're gonna use this again. If this is the inside of my Sherpa, I literally just put some tape on it 
and stick it to the inside like this so it's not gonna slide around and clonk them in the head. But what I usually put in this for water is I will actually take some of his favorite treats, which are Nutri-Berries, put those in the dish and then after we get through security, which I'm gonna talk about in a sec, because when I go to the bathroom or buy a bottle of water, I literally just spritz some like on the Nutri-Berries to uh, keep them a little bit moist so that when he does pick at them, he gets a little bit of water. And then I also keep what's left in the bottle in my bag so that if we have time before the flight, um, I'll go in and give him a little drink as well. I just don't like it sloshing around in there while we're taking off landing, what have you. Also in his carrier, I of course put some kind of bird toy. I just kind of grabbed this one for the video, but I did let him fly with one with a bell once and it was a horrible mistake for obvious reasons because he jingled the whole way across my country. So, you know, not something super loud, but something with lots of little dongles on it for him to keep him busy, lots to chew on, lots to play with, that kind of thing, uh, just to help keep him distracted because like, we all know planes are boring. I can only imagine how boring it is for an animal. Now we have our carrier established, we know what's going in there. I'm gonna grab Cusco so you guys can say hi, and then I'm gonna talk about what happens when you get to the airport. It's gonna be a lot harder if we don't have any millet. So Cusco's just gonna chill here with some tasty millet because he has the attention span of like a three-year-old on crack. Not that I'm saying you should ever put a three-year-old on crack, duh. But you know, the internet's a scary place. I feel like I need that disclaimer. By the way, last thing you should always make sure you have when you're traveling with a pet, is to make sure you have some kind of identification. So for Cusco, I write down his name, his vet, my name, my contact information, as well as our flight number and our where we're staying like at our destination. When you get to the airport, if you are taking an animal in the cabin, one thing that they don't tell you that I didn't know about was that your pet actually needs to be able to come out of the carrier when you go through security. This is because they need to put the carrier through the x-ray, but the x-ray is not safe for pets, obviously. So they need your animal to come out. So if you have a cat or a small dog, obviously put a harness on them, practice it at home if you need to. Not really an option for us. So what I found out is that you can actually ask for a private search room when you go through security. When you get to the front of the line, you just explain, hey, I have an animal, can I please have a private search room? They don't want animals getting loose in the airport any more than you do. And every time I've asked for a private search room, airport security has been super nice, really accommodating, really positive experience. They'll take you into a private search room, which is usually just in the main security area. You can take your animal out. One of the security people will wait with you and the other will go to scan the carrier. And you just wait in a little room. It's the size of like a closet. It's super small. You just hang out with your animal. So for Cusco, I always bring some millet uh, for this purpose. So he'll just sit on my finger just like this and have a little snack while they scan his carrier. And once they return your carrier and scan the rest of your belongings, you are good to go. Once you're through security, that's when you can crack open that water bottle, fill up his dish, give him a drink. If I can find a single stall bathroom, sometimes I'll let him out for a minute just so that he can, you know, get out of his carrier for a bit. If you're flying with WestJet, they do typically give you priority boarding if you're traveling with an animal. Wow, once you have boarded, uh, a flight attendant will come over and just go over the safety procedures with you should you need to evacuate with a pet. So pretty straightforward. Cusco, when we fly, the only time he really gets stressed is during takeoff. He'll just get kind of quiet and hide. So while we're taking off, I usually put my hand down by his carrier under the seat and just kind of keep it at the front and just talk to him a little bit, let him know I'm there. And that's always worked really well for him. Once he kind of gets that reassurance that what we're doing is okay, he's okay. <laughs> One last thing I forgot to mention that I always bring in my carry-on is a small blanket. And that's because where the animals go under the seat, uh, it tends to be pretty cold and it can get a little bit drafty. So I always bring this so I can cover him if I need to, or if we're flying overnight and he needs to be covered so he can sleep. Same kind of thing, just to help keep that draft away. Plus it smells like home. It's a little bit more familiar to him. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> In my experience, if you don't make a big deal about it, if you act like it's a totally normal, okay thing, so do they. There's always gonna be some animals that travel better than others. I'm very fortunate that Cusco enjoys it. Anyway, I know you guys are here to see the animals. You're not here to see me talk. So thank you so much for watching this video and let's go check out the birds because I'm about to let them out of the aviary for the day.
gross and I hate it. All right, let's let some kiddos out. Here's some beautiful art by Cusco. Holes in my ear. You need to replace this panel on the door. Here's a little look. There's some bird poop. Mm. Shop back that later. All right, here's ye old aviary. Cusco's already out. Bex, you coming out? Come on. Let's go. Come, come. Wow. You guys don't aren't feeling it? Oh, okay. Well, there go the budgies. Bye. I don't know if X is gonna come out. Sometimes she stays in. Indy still isn't really coming out on his own. He can't, he's come out once or twice. Um, but he's getting braver, so hopefully today's the day. <laughs> and then this is just all their toys, food. I'll do a full aviary tour at some point, uh, but today is not that day. <laughs> That's it for this one. If you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down there. Also, if you have any travel questions about your pets, I know I didn't cover everything, so feel free to ask me a question in the comments, and I'll do my best to give you as knowledgeable of an answer as I can. Thanks, I'll see you next time.